Hey, what's up guys? It's Microsoft for Reptile back with another video today. Today is day two of May Madness. It is the Reptile Room Tour that I promised you guys yesterday. I didn't actually end up doing one for April, so that's kind of weird for me. Uh, I, I guess an update since then. I had my birthday on April 26th, so that's kind of cool. Uh, if you guys are looking for daily content on Instagram, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I'll leave that link in the description. I'll leave at the beginning of this video. If you guys are looking for any video suggestions that you want to see on the channel during May Madness, make sure you go into the comment section and leave it down there. If you guys are wondering what the heck May Madness is, I guess it's time that you go watch the first video that I posted yesterday. Now with that being said, let's get on to the Reptile Room Tour. Alright, so where are we going to start? Um, I think that we'll start like here and just work our way around the room. Uh, so in here we have Striker, the OG Leopard Gecko homie of the crew. Uh, he is right on cue. He thinks there's food being given out, but no. Sorry little man. No food being given out today. My bad. But you can just see that his tank is doing actually really well. Um, lots of plant growth and succulent growth, I suppose. His tank is actually looking pretty sick, I'm not going to lie. Uh, obviously his desert rose here died, which kind of sucks, but, um, it is actually starting to regrow. Like these shoots here do have little tiny leaves on them and are actually doing okay. So I ain't going to complain about that, but the rest of his tank, uh, is growing in nicely. The succulents are starting to fill in a bit. And, uh, the other night I actually caught him lying up top there and it was so cute, but I, I didn't have my camera or phone. So, uh. I didn't get any pictures, but it would have been perfect to post on Instagram. Wah, wah. But that is Striker, the OG, the homie, the original gangster of the crew, the one that started it all off. Moving up from there, we have the Geomida Spangleri. These guys are the very rare Vietnamese black-breasted leaf turtles. I now have their bins open. You can see there's one of them there. And the other one's actually on top of the log right there. Little goofball. Look at their little crackhead eyes. They're so cute. They've actually about tripled in size since I got them. I believe I got them back in November. And I've been weighing them periodically uh, throughout that time. And they started at about 10 and 12 grams. And now they're around like the 30, 35 mark. So that's pretty epic. I do really like these guys. They are hilarious to watch eat. Um, I will make a feeding video at some point during May Madness. So if you guys are curious about that, then just wait. You'll, you'll get a feeding video. Don't you worry. On them being upgraded because they will be upgraded. Don't you worry. Uh, I do plan to do a relatively, uh, a decent exoterra setup for them i haven't yet decided if i'm going to split it right down the middle and do like a 36 long exoterra with like a divider down the middle i haven't decided just yet on what i'm going to do but i will be upgrading them probably in the next month or two uh, i'm not going to put any promises out there for june or i mean may um just because <laughs> May is already a crazy enough month. I will be redoing Sky's tank down there, so that will be coming during May. But these guys aren't in desperate need of an upgrade. And now that we've covered these two tanks here, we can move on to the Euromastics. I actually did capture some footage of them eating yesterday, so I'll throw that in right now. The female does have some quite nice coloration, but not quite as colorful as the male. I was hoping Mr. Male would come out. Uh, speaking of which, I actually don't have a name for these guys. So if you guys are interested in leaving your name suggestions down below, please do so. I would like to hear what you guys have in mind.
But now that you've enjoyed them eating, you can check out their tank. Um, I have the Arcadia Deep Heat Projector right there, a 50 watt basking bulb there. I have a 10.0, a 12.0 UVB at the back or up front, I can't remember which one it's in right now. And then uh, the other bulb is just like a standard 6700 Kelvin bulb. I will be doing a review on the DP projector this month, so stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, their tank's looking pretty good. It's matured, it's kind of set into its final form. You can see back there, I do have the um, lay bin for the female. They spend a lot of their time in there, especially the female. Not necessarily like digging or laying eggs, but they do just like to retreat into there uh, whilst I'm around in the day. And then whenever I put out food, they come out and chow down on that. So that is a year of Mastix. I still have a pair and their eggs should be hatching in the next probably couple weeks. Um, so I do need to pick up a, or I need to set up my little like 15 gallon tank that I have uh, for a basking spot and stuff for them so that they can, they can thrive as well once they hatch. The eggs are at my buddy's house. Um, so I would just go pick up the babies whenever they all hatch. With that being said, we can move down to our boy Sky. Sky is the Meraki Blue Tongue Skink or Maruki Blue Tongue Skink. And uh, he is the one in desperate need of an upgrade. I plan to do a similar style to these. I'll get some nice big rocks, maybe some like grasses and stuff like that, and plant them in his cage. I have said in the past that I wanted to uh, actually talk to Brian Barcheck and get some universal rock done. I have talked to him, but again, he's so busy that uh, it's just not always possible right when you want it to happen. So unfortunately, uh, I'm still waiting on uh, an update about that. But you know what? Sky, can you come out, dude? Can you come out? Like, uh, no. I'm quite comfortable right where I am. <laughs> Either way, that's Sky, the Maruki Blue Tongue Skink. Uh, very cute little friendly guy. Sky does have a bit of a case of the runs. Uh, not like number two runs, but the runs as in like he runs. He's not a bitey or even really hissy Blue Tongue Skink, which a lot of the Indonesian variety are. He really has trouble standing still. Kind of like me, um, I'm always like picking at my fingers or whatever, but he just runs. Uh, so, he's a goofball, but I love him. He's kind of my, I guess, garbage can of the room. If I have any leftover food or whatever, that's where it goes. And uh, he's doing really well, so I cannot complain. Now, uh, for those of you who might have seen my March Reptile Room Tour, I fully admitted to Bowser, the Monitor not doing so well um, he wasn't out then he is now and he is doing a bit better but um, I know you guys are probably going to judge me for uh, seeing him this way he's not looking great you can see his tail is pretty skinny um, thankfully at the time he was not eating anything now I've been able to get him on taking some pinky mice, uh, some frozen thawed pinkies, as well as he's starting eating insects again. So that's awesome. Uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know how it happened. He just kind of gave out on me for a couple months. Didn't really eat, didn't really do anything. Um, but now he's finally starting to kind of come back into his own and he's doing a lot better. So... I'm not one of those people that's going to shy away from any conflict or hate. I understand that that happens in this hobby, and I understand that it sucks. But you know what? Uh, I'm open with you guys. I know that you guys um, are typically pretty uh, well-receiving of my openness, which is nice, because um, you guys are very encouraging. So I'm glad that he's doing better. I'm giving him a bath like three to four times a week. Um, I'm feeding him pretty much daily. And he's finally starting to put back on some weight. So thanks for being a champ, Bows. I appreciate it. I'm glad I didn't lose you there because you are you are one of the OGs. You're one of the mans. It's nice and hot in there. He's got a nice and hot basking spot. And uh, 
I'm not going to like rush to upgrade or change anything, especially when he's in his more fragile state right now. Hopefully I don't get roasted too hard for that, but that's life. I'm, I'm here to be open with you guys, and uh, hopefully you guys respect that. With that being said, I think we can finally move on to the man, the myth, the legend, the showman. Hello, pal. How are you? The little shell destroyer. He's a uh, quite a happy little boy. Um, <laughs> he certainly has a decent pen. Um, with this, typically what I do uh, like two to three, maybe four times a year, I go to the garden center and I buy a ton of like outdoor garden plants and plant them in his terrarium because A, he loves them, B, it's healthy for them, C, he gets all that added nutrition of total variety in his diet. So I'll probably end up doing that during May Madness if you guys are interested in me kind of filming, going there, looking at the different plants and, and telling you guys which ones are good, which ones are not, as well as some resources to use uh, for if you decide to do something like that. But you can see Shellman, I've stopped weighing him in the videos months and months and months ago because he really wasn't growing at all. He stays at about 650 grams, uh, and that's kind of where he's maxed out at the moment at least. You can see his pen. I use that as a laptop holder as well. Typically he climbs on that wood that he's on right now and either knocks over my laptop or like bites my laptop, which... <sighs> Tortoises, I tell you. Tortoises. Moving up from the shell, we'll go on to, these are the Ufaga Pumilio Elmerente. As you can see in there, they are a beautiful species of frog. And they are doing very, very well. They're breeding quite prolifically in here, prolifically. You guys can see they're just stunning little frogs. Um, I put in this Bucephalandra, I cut it out from my tank. Ooh, here's one of the babies that's really nice and spotted. I just hope that you guys can see how nice it is. Come on out. This camera's not wanting to focus very well. But you know what? He is beautiful. Um, I do plan to have some of these guys on sale at the Reptile Expo that I'm doing at the end of May. Um, so if you guys, I guess, are interested, then then hit me up now and let me know. But, uh, there we go. Well, momentarily you can see it. <laughs> These guys are really cool. I love having them in my room. You hear them pretty much calling all the time in my videos. As you can see here, there's a, a little clutch of eggs that I think some of the newbies, like the newly grown up ones, are actually starting to eat some of the eggs, which is kind of unfortunate. But, uh, that's why they are for sale. So... They're doing good, they're eating, they're growing, they're breeding, and that's kind of all I can ask for. This definitely is not my favorite tank. It's not a terrible tank by any means, but it's certainly not the best tank, so... That's just what I have to deal with, and that's what I make do with. So, they're breeding, I guess they're happy. This tank here is actually all sold bromeliads that I've sold, and the weather hasn't been good enough to ship them out yet, so... I'm just letting them kind of chill in here get acclimatized to the more humid conditions in a terrarium. Uh, this guy here is a beautiful Biophytum Zenkerai, which is really, really cool. It's actually blooming right now. If you guys are in Canada and you want any bromeliads and you're watching this video, let me know. I have a ton on my Facebook page that you guys can go check out. And uh, yeah, these guys are all, they're all doing very well. So can't complain. Hi, Dixon. So this is a Europlatus guntheri, one of the more heat tolerant of the Europlatus genus, which is really nice because in summertime here in my room, it actually does get to be pretty warm, like ambience of about like 84, 83. And these guys handle it pretty well. Um, their tank is a little bit warmer than what it is. You guys can hear the Pumilio calling. <laughs> But their tank does get a little bit warmer than ambient, so uh, they can handle quite high temperatures. Obviously, it's not like that all year round, but um, it's it's a reality. They're really, really cool creatures. I love Dixon. The problem is he doesn't have any females in Canada. There's like legit 
no females of the Gunthry in Canada. I guess right now, last night I took to filming some uh, footage of Tig and Bane because they're both out and I'm glad I did because they are not out currently so I'm going to let you guys tune into that footage. So we have Tig, the Crested Gecko, and her tank. I'll show you her tank when it's daylight and you can actually see it but just so you guys have an idea of who Tig is and what she's all about. That is Tig. There you go girly. And one of the other key nocturnal creatures we have in here is of course Bane and Bane is his own pissy self as per usual you can see Bane there he's a big boy he's definitely a big boy big green blob that's the beast himself Mr. Bane and now that you've actually seen who they are, what they look like, what their shenanigans are. Oh, and Tig's actually still kind of out. Hi, girly. We can see you in the daytime. That's crazy. She likes to hide up there, which is kind of cute. But this is her tank. Um, it's not bad. It's not perfect. But I think the tank itself looks really, really nice. Uh, we got a cork log. We got some climbing branches, feeding ledge, and then all the plants except for this one are all living. So all these snake plants or mother's tongues or sansevera, whatever you want to call it, are all living, as well as that alocasia there, the African mask plant, and a little ficus there. So they're all doing well. They're all currently growing, which is perfect because that's what you want in a setup. Um... There is a ton of isopods and stuff tramping around in the in the leaf litter and whatnot. You guys already saw the footage of Bane. I'll just show you a bit of his tank. Um, gotta move my little my little planty boy. But there we go. This is Bane's setup. Uh, it's a 24 by 18 by 24 Exoterra, and I quite enjoy it. I actually think it's a a pretty decent setup. Uh, he typically lies at nighttime on the back there, like right through there. And then during the daytime, he hides in that back cork log, uh, this one right here. And then at nighttime, he just kind of tramps around and eats a bunch of food. That cup was totally full yesterday, and it's almost empty now. So I'm glad he is chowing down because typically during winter time they slow down a little bit, which is kind of nice, but also kind of scary to witness. Uh, down here, uh, a little shout out to myself and my art teacher in grade 9. I made the longboard, she painted it. It looks pretty dope. Uh, <laughs> but this here is all my plant selection. Like I said, if you guys want bromeliads, let me know. I will be doing like a plant room tour later on. And uh, you guys can enjoy that for yourselves. But I will keep it off this video because I know not everybody's interested in it. I will also do a little invert tour, a short invert video, maybe where I feed them and stuff like that, because uh, I have four little inverts now, so that's kind of exciting. And by inverts, I mean tarantulas. Down here, we have the very rare, at least in Canada, Ebonavia inguis, or these are also called the Madagascar clawless gecko. There's one. Hello. There we go. Yeah, I'll put you down. No. Oh. There you go. Yeah, run away. Run places, I guess. There's two of them in here. Unfortunately, I believe those are both female. I'm pretty sure I caught them both laying eggs, so that kind of sucks. That's a little unfortunate um, because the eggs were also infertile, so that's even worse. But, uh... They're a really cool gecko. I really wish they were more available in the hobby, and that's why I tried to get some to breed them. But, like I said, unfortunately, I think they are both female. So, on another import, I might grab a male. In here, we also have another species of small gecko that is much more common in the hobby. Holy smokes. Look at that. 
a big old chunky Mor morning gecko. I almost said Mormon's gecko. <laughs> These guys are really, really cool, really rewarding um, because they are a, a parthenogenic species, which I showed some interest in uh, doing a parthenogenesis video. So I think I might actually do that, do some research look up some papers and find some cool material for you guys. But uh, these guys are doing really well in here. And there are, I believe three of them, maybe four. I plan to sell two at the Reptile Expo and then keep another two for myself uh, just to grow my little colony and have a lot of morning geckos available. Really cool gecko species, quite shy, quite skittish. But um, definitely a cool addition to things like dart frog tanks, stuff like that. If you're not a huge fan of the dart frogs, then maybe it's a good option for you. And speaking of dart frog tanks, this is actually the last thing to show in the reptile room. These are my Dendrobates citronella or Dendrobates tinctorius citronella. They are the citronella dart frogs. Shocking, right? You guys can see their tank. It's actually doing really well. This plant right here is one of like two in the Canada. And it's called the manta ray vine because of the leaves that look like this. So I'm trying to grow that out. It's actually doing really well in here. But I need to get them into a bigger spot. Um, I plan to sell two of them. I plan to keep a pair for myself and then sell the other two at the Reptile Expo. So if you guys are at the Reptile Expo in Calgary on May 25th, 26th, and you're looking for some citronella dart frogs, these guys are adults, they are calling, and if I might even have two pairs, I, I don't know just yet. I haven't actually taken the time to sex them yet, but by the looks of things, I have two pairs. So, pretty stoked about that. Anyways, with that being said, that does wrap up the reptile room tour. I do have a bunch of tanks that are totally empty. That one up there, uh, this little bin here is just filled with bromeliads and orchids. Same thing down there, and then there's actually one behind my cricket bin as well. All of those are all just orchids, plants, that kind of stuff, and I'll be making a video about that later on in May Madness, so stay tuned for that. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this long reptile room tour. Uh, I actually showed you everything, I think. Yeah, I actually did. You guys saw everything in the collection today, so that's pretty fantastic. Um, there is a gecko at work that I am, like, biting my nails at not getting because... I would have to set up a tank first and you guys know that I'm an advocate of having stuff set up before you're getting an animal so I, <laughs> I would do that before I get it I'll just leave the word or, or, or like the the name golden tail gecko in in your minds and you guys can google it and oogle for yourself so I want to thank you guys very much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you did smash that like button if you have any questions comments concerns anything like that, leave them in the comments section. I will be here to answer any of your questions as well as video suggestions and merch ideas in the comment section down below as well. So I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, click that subscribe button. Play Ding Dong Ditch with the doorbell next to it. That way you'll get notified every single time I post a video. And with that being said, we'll see you tomorrow.